Well, I grew up out on a farm. Actually, uh, I, I say it's a farm, but it's kind of uh, just out in the country. I thought that uh, I kind of carried the mentality in there. You know, if you're if you're going to do something, you know, why go halfway with it? If I'm if I'm going to be a Marine, then I want to be a Marine in the infantry. Boot camp. Well, I went to Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, Fort Lost in the Woods. That's what everybody calls it. Um, I had a great drill sergeant. I don't know if everybody tells you that, but I love my drill sergeant. <laughs> he was. Um, I think the one mission I'll never forget um, was uh, two of my my buddies, my platoon members, uh, died. There's a whole a social aspect of college, but I, I've never experienced that. And I don't really want to now. You know, usually that's what people do. You know, freshmen and they come in there, I like, got your dorm and la 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 la. I just didn't, uh, I skipped all that, you know, it didn't, didn't happen. We did get mortared. Kind of shocked me the first time because, you know, we all we always shot back at them. So I was used to hearing outgoing rounds, and the first time it happened, it kind of shocked me because I never heard anything blow up around me before. It was hot. I remember getting off in Kuwait and just, you think Houston's hot, you know, which it is, but this was, you know, summer in Kuwait, and it was almost blinding hot and bright. I'd never seen or heard anyone experience that before. I don't know if I've done more for my country or if it's done more for me, kind of just with the experiences. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know how much I've benefited it, but you know, it's definitely changed me. Our soldiers are coming home, and they bring with them the experiences of a lifetime. From Combat to Kentucky really got started out of an interest of documenting veterans' stories today. Most people think about oral history as something you do with folks who are in their 70s or 80s, uh, reflecting back 50, 60 years. And from combat to Kentucky is, is a chance to document these stories as these veterans are coming back, as they're transitioning into society, more specifically as they're transitioning into higher education. And what we're getting are just incredibly fresh memories, uh, incredible articulations of their experiences abroad, uh, their experiences in conflict, and the result is incredibly powerful. The From Combat to Kentucky Oral History Project is an ongoing oral history project that documents Kentucky student veterans and their individual experiences during the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. The Nunn Center has really been documenting veterans' stories uh, since 1973. Uh, we have over 500 oral history interviews with veterans from World War I, World War II, Vietnam, on to the present. It's documenting the, the stories of these individual veterans and not going into these interviews with agendas uh, and politicizing uh, these individual experiences. What we're doing is documenting them and, and presenting them back to the general public. What makes this generation of veterans uh, very unique is what I call the yo-yo effect and that's the going back and forth uh, to deployments or to harm's way. It's one thing to go to the conflict and have to do what uh, you've been trained to do and then put it behind you and readjust to your civilian life and get on with, uh, with your family and so forth. It's another thing to go to that, come back knowing that you have to go again. Two veterans go out into the field, they may have the same role and have exactly uh, the same job to do, but they have very different experiences and they draw very different meanings from those experiences and it's important to document that. It's important to the veteran community uh, to let them know that uh, their stories are worth hearing and that people do want to hear them and uh, I think it's some level that's therapeutic for veterans. Just telling the story, and as most counselors would tell you, just talking about something can be therapeutic. And I think that uh, is no different for this project. I think for the veteran to sit down and tell their story, whatever that story may be, for two to three to four hours, whatever it takes them to tell that story, is basically unloading uh, something that they've been carrying uh, emotionally for quite some time. We started getting into a routine 
where we literally um, were hit by an IED, a roadside bomb, every other day. Um, and that's just for our company, that's not our battalion. We would drive down the road, it would be a patrol that went out every 48, 72 hours, and they would get hit. I had four surgeons working on me at once. Just everything was ripped open, my, you know, everything. It was, it was bad. Um, last thing I remember, I was laying perfectly 100% conscious, and the doctor was talking to me about, well, what hurts, and, and I just said, well, the, the medic in the vehicle on the way here said my leg was broken. I had a compound fracture, but it's not going to be amputated. I'm good to go. And uh, the doctor just said, well, okay. And I said, so just as long as you save my leg, I'm happy. I don't want to be an amputee. Well, a, at that time, a female E5 medic walked up. She looked at me in the eyes, and I saw her look down at my leg. And I knew right then and there, I said, okay, doc, obviously my leg is gone, so just put me out and I don't want to remember anything. And so I woke up two days later and the leg was gone and I was stitched up. Interviews focus on each veteran's military experience as well as their transition back into civilian life, particularly into higher education. In addition to documenting these powerful stories from an historical or archival perspective, the C2KY project carries with it a multitude of additional benefits. Some of the students that were interviewed have returned to reflect back on the importance of the project, its possibilities, and how talking about their experience for an oral history project helped them reintegrate back into civilian life. It's, it's not something that should be glossed over and, and just um, you know, summarized in a, in a few, few paragraphs in a history book. It's captured all of these stories with so much taste and so much respect because they are oral histories. They're not media interviews. And the project is not interested in one particular angle or one particular approach. It's completely bipartisan. It's completely apolitical. I wanted uh, my kids more than anything and you know my family to really be able to look at this, you know, you know, years and years and years on a row, maybe I'm gone or, you know, too old to remember all the details, I can look at it and just um, remember, you know, or just, just, just know what I went through. Because um, I kind of, you know, you always wish that you would ask your grandparents these things, but of course it's too late when you finally get old enough to think about it or, uh, you know, really ask them. Most of their family members who haven't really heard the story, so I don't really tell a whole lot of people, um, they were like, wow, you know, they're just, just surprised, just, just surprised that I went through all that. And there was a lot of moments in my interview that there were a lot of self-reflections. I discovered things about myself during the interview that I hadn't even realized after being out for three years. And this interview, systematically, just by me talking and fleshing things out, helped me understand and helped me put some meaning to those experiences. Mostly family and friends that have seen it have said something along those lines that I, I can see kind of where you were now in a, in a better light uh, than I did just trying to, trying to talk to you about it because honestly, I, and I think it probably holds true for most, most people without those experiences that they don't know what to ask. They don't know what's okay and they don't, you know, they don't want to be offensive about it. They don't want to you know, be, be rude in any way. But, while you're still curious, you, you need some way of of connecting, you know, of trying to trying to reach common ground and understanding what that is. And I think these interviews can serve uh, in that way as well. I think a lot of veterans leave these interviews with kind of a good feeling, like they've unloaded quite a bit um, with each story. So I think the military has only helped. If I would have went straight into college right out of high school, I don't think I would have lasted for very long. I would have been been gone by the end of the first semester probably. And there was the, my undergrad experience was, was different than a lot of these guys had. And you know, I'd really never gone to a civilian, you know, education institute before. Coming back from Iraq, well, again, you, go, you, you kind of go through all of the emotions um, that is just coming back, reintegrating into life uh, from being a company commander and for, uh, forward was, was a challenge. Um, you know, I came home and uh, I just, it felt like 
nobody even realized that I was even gone. What even, what's even going on? You know, a lot of people, I remember a, this girl had asked me at a, at a bar, somebody had mentioned it in our group about going over, oh, he just came back, you know, whatever, you know, that's in that kind of story. And they were, she was like, is that, is that still going on? And I'm just like, are you serious? You know, it's just like, it, it just seems like that was the, the common um, perception to everyone. And uh, to hear that was just kind of a slap in my mouth. The Nun Center is absolutely committed to this project on an ongoing basis. You know, we've been documenting veteran stories for, for uh, 25 years and, and we're not going to let up. This is an important part of our core mission is documenting veteran stories. But this particular project, in order for it to happen in a big way, is going to require partnerships. So I'd like to see us uh, partner with a foundation, uh, partner with an individual who is passionate about veterans' stories. Partner with a corporation that's interested in funding a project like this, which is really documenting these stories effectively and professionally. These are people's life stories and young people's life stories and heroic young people's life stories. So these are stories that, that are part and an enormous part of history of this time. These stories are connecting to the general public. From Combat to Kentucky really has created a model for documenting veterans' experiences on a university campus or a college campus. And I really see this project being something that we can take to other universities, whether it's a community college, whether it is a small private liberal arts institution or a large state school to document this veteran experience as they come back and integrate back into higher education. It just wouldn't stop, you know, you have the, these intense dreams and it goes on for two years and you just, you know, you just want to do anything to make it stop. And the, the frequency is, is definitely, definitely decreased uh, now, but I don't know. I guess over time, I ended up being able to talk talk to people, I think, um, has really helped me out instead of bottling, bottling up so much.